Good evening. Welcome to the real graveyard shift. My name is Jonathan Lottoff. I'm from Rolgana. Um, I'm very involved in the retail sector, the formal retail sector um, in Ghana. Um, I just wanted to quickly sketch a little bit of a scene in terms of where we are from an economic perspective and what influence that is having on the, uh, on the economy. Overall, the, the, the economy of Ghana is doing excuse me, a lot better than what it has been. We can see that the, uh, on the two slides there, the, uh, the first, the, or on the two graphs there, the first one being the Ghana um, annual growth rate of GDP, you can see that it's been growing at uh, almost 5.5%. The Ghana city has been relatively stable. Um, there have been, it seems to go through phases of stability and then depreciation and then phases of stability. Um, we, we are on a, on a sort of a more stable path at this moment in time with the city averaging about 4.8. Um, you can have a look there, the inflation rate has come down significantly from about 19%, hovering around 10 or 11%. The interest rate in Ghana has come down from 26% to approximately 17% as well. If we just have a look at the, the um, trading environment indicators, you can see that uh, Ghana, Ghana's competitive index um, has improved significantly over the last two years. Um, and if we have a look at the corruption uh, perception index, um, the, the, the perception of corruption in, in Ghana certainly has, um, has decreased as well. In terms of uh, ease of doing business, certainly uh, relatively stable, getting marginally better, better and the Ghana terrorism index of this, uh, is, is very, very low. So I think just to summarise very quickly, I think it can be said that according to the st statistics which I've just presented, that Ghana is a lot safer, um, a lot, it's less corrupt than two years ago, it's easier to do business, and the economy is growing at 5.5%. So at high, high level, macro level, it certainly does look like um, a great place to, to invest at this moment in time. But I think that if we just try and compare the economic uh, indicators to where we are from a, from a, a retail perspective, I, I don't think that the, that the positive effects of the economy have really filtered down into the retail sector as quickly as what we would have liked. What I did was in the, in the forthcoming slides was that I compared the, first, the results of the first three quarters of 2018 to the first three quarters of 2017 across the portfolio, which I manage specifically. And you can have a look, <coughs> the first one that, <coughs> that as property managers and asset managers that we have a look at, obviously is, is foot counts, because we believe that um, foot count, there's often a direct correlation between foot counts and turnover in malls. And you can see that over the last three quarters versus the same period last year, the foot count has remained relatively stable. If we just have a look at the turnover growth, also quarter one to quarter three, 2018 versus the same period last year, you're having a look at a turnover growth of about uh, 15%, which is, which is quite good um, at, at face value. Um, a lot of that uh, growth coming specifically from the anchors, if you, fil if you uh, filter out the performance of the anchor tenants, you're looking at a growth of around 13%. How I determine this is that it's like-on-like -like growth, so it's exactly the same tenants over exactly the same period of time. And I think when one has a look at this number, you, you really think that retail is, um, is booming in Ghana. But I think the reality on the ground is that there are, certain, there are certainly a lot of challenges around that. Our vacancies in the mall, um, as, as uh, Joseph alluded to on his slide, is 10%. Is My numbers are, are marginally different, but it, it has come down from approximately 10.3% to about 9.5%. Um, it, it looks, it, obviously it's moving in the right direction. We have certain nodes that where our vacancy factor has improved significantly over the last year, 
and we have other nodes where we are struggling um, with, with vacancies. I think in summary, the retail performance, um, the foot count is, is flat. We understand that the, that the turnover is increasing and that the anchor tenants co um, continue to, to outperform the, the line tenants and the vacancy factor has decreased. If we just understand some of the challenges currently in the retail environment, um, the electronic, the, the technology and electronic category is, is really, really struggling. The market is, is saturated um, and, they, and, and, and as a result of that, a lot of the retailers have entered into a price war, eroding margins, and a number of our vacancies in some nodes have come specifically because uh, of tenants in this specific category have, have closed down. International brands, we, we, having, uh, we find that international brands are very, very interested in coming into the marketplace. The challenge is, is that they don't want to come in and, uh, as corporates, they want to come in as franchise, as franchises, and with the, our, our pool of, of franchise holders is, is very, very small. There's not a lot of guys around with the capital that can sustain, um, that can sustain this. Um, generally, the tenant pool in Ghana is small. As a, as a property management company, we're always looking at how we can upskill and grow local retailers into businesses, be it through uh, fairs that we do or alternatively um, by giving local, lo local retailers a kiosk and then assisting them to grow into, into a shop. There's added pressure on consumer spending. Um, recently, the, the top band of, of um, income tax has increased from 25 to 35% for those earning uh, more than 10,000 Ghana cities a month. Um, cash flows in companies is under pressure. They've changed the VAT structure. So although the VAT rate has remained um, stable at 17.5%, uh, suppliers can now no longer claim this, uh, the full 17.5% back um, from the revenue authorities. They can only claim back 12.5% and the other 5% is split between two other funds. So in essence, you really, in real terms, have a 5% uh, increase in your, in, in your supply costs. Um, I think that, as I said, that there, that there certainly are, although retail has its challenges, there certainly are pockets of excellence in terms of there's pockets of excellence in location, there's pockets of excellence in, um, in, in with certain retailers. And I believe that the retailers that operate specifically in the mass market segment uh, of the retail environment um, do exceptionally well, and the, the, the gap for corporate mass market retailers is still in Ghana, is still wide open. If you come into Ghana as an international retailer, you must be prepared to, you must be, you must be prepared to, to adapt to local conditions. The guys that come in, and, and specifically South African retailers and others, come into the marketplace and have the inability or the lack of desire to change to local market conditions are the guys that are really battling. The guys that are able to adapt to the local uh, market conditions do exceptionally well. I'll give you an example. You walk through any mall uh, in, in Ghana during the period of May, June, July and August and you can spot the South African retailers and, and other retailers that are, have not adapted their model because in their windows you'll see, see knee-high boots, you'll see jackets, you'll see scarves and I mean quite honestly <laughs> I don't think I've ever, in the last four years that I've lived in Ghana, had a day less than 25 degrees Celsius. So it's, it's really about um, adaptability to the, to the local market conditions. Something very interesting, credit is not uh, big in, in Ghana as, at all in comparison with some other markets. But something that we need to just be aware of is the opportunity of lay buyers. It certainly is something that is beginning to get traction whereby it's, it's really the opposite to, to, to credit. So you pay upfront in installments and once the value of the item has been paid for, you get it as opposed to buy now and, and pay later. And some retailers in the market are doing very, very well. 
Shoppers have indicated, and we've done our own uh, surveys on this, shoppers have indicated that they really, a, a, big, a big reason why they come to the malls is specifically because they are looking for entertainment. Um, and from a mall management perspective, and certainly from a tenant perspective, those guys who offer a very high degree of what we call shop attainment do very well. I'll use Decathlon as an example. They trade out a junction mall. You can walk into their, into their store at any time. You can use any of the equipment. They've got table tennis tables up. They've got uh, basketball nets up. And the guys actually go in to play. And it just creates a, a great vibe in the store. And, and they do exceptionally well. Um, and that positive in the, in, the, in the retail market is that the cost of occupation has decreased. Um, the electricity tariffs have decreased between 18 and 25 percent, and that's also had a significant impact on the service charge costs. I don't think that any uh, presentation on retail will be complete without talking about the risks that online retail uh, poses to, to traditional brick and mortar. If the traditional brick and mortar um, retailers are not prepared to play in this game. Online uh, retailing, online shopping is, is still relatively small uh, in Ghana, um, but the biggest categories here, and it also speaks to why this category is battling from uh, a brick and mortar perspective, is uh, by far the electronics category, specifically because of price. You can buy a cell phone, a tablet, a laptop, anything online for a lot less than what you can buy through it uh, in the shops. And um, food, the food tenants also do very well, although what, from a food perspective, they, you can buy it from the restaurant and have it delivered to your home. Jumia is by far the biggest. They also have Jumia food, Jumia party, um, and they are also uh, the Zuma shop, Tonitin, Tonitin and Mikasa. The concept of retailers offering their own online portals has not yet gained uh, momentum in Ghana, but I truly believe that this remains a big, big opportunity because previous studies have shown that, that brick and mortar retailers who have their own online portal do significantly better than those that don't. Um, one of the challenge, challenges for online retailing is, is infrastructure, um, lack of, of home addresses, where do you deliver the parcel to? Um, and yeah, but I, I do think that this is an opportunity that the, that the brick and mortar retailers need to have a look at. So in closing, although unlike, not unlike the rest of the world, formal retailing in Ghana is under pressure. The economy in Ghana uh, and the trading environment certainly has improved, and we believe that the long-term, uh, the long-term effects, uh, or the, the long-term view of, of Ghana is, is significantly positive. Some of the risks do include the depreciation of the local currency and uh, as it does affect rental levels and the cost of items being imported. But I think from certainly from a long-term perspective, there remains a lot of opportunity um, for retailing specifically in Ghana. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Good, if there's no questions, it means that I've answered all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, that brings us to uh, the end of our day one. Um, we will now, um, for those who are attending the dinner, it's happening at the Sky Lounge. Thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, we'll be starting at uh, 8.30 tomorrow. Uh, for those attending the dinner, the Sky Lounge is on the, uh, the top floor. Um, by the reception, you take the lifts. Um, and once again, thank you to, to, to both Jonathan and Joseph, as well as Brol. Um, and we'll begin the sessions um, early tomorrow. Um, thanks again and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed today. Thank you.